Hello and welcome to the second of two videos which analyse the Aventsa vs Koff dual decks. So this is the second one. I'm going to be looking at the Koff deck and just looking at the card interactions and then towards the end looking a little bit about how this deck might interact with Aventsa, which is the, the first one that I did. Um, so I've divided this up very similar to the way I divided the Venser deck. I've got my mana base over here along with some um, land fetching cards. I've got um, my Planeswalker and then I've got some direct damage um, and sort of also which will double up as, as removal. Uh, and then I've got my creatures over here organised by uh, mana cost in addition some equipment as well so let's just go through this deck um, we've got 25 mountains in this deck so there's a lot of mountains but the key to this deck is making your land drops each turn because several of the cards in this deck have landfall abilities so not surprisingly um, we've got a number of cards which help ensure that we have land in our hand but also in the case of Wayfarer's Bauble make sure that we're able to actually get land out um, more more one land more than one land per turn even if it is tapped so with wayfarer's bauble it's one to cast but to activate it it costs two um, you have to also sacrifice it and when you do you can go out find a basic land so in this case it's going to be a mountain and uh, you can put that card in onto the battlefield, but it is tapped. Um, so you won't be able to use it to generate mana, but it will activate any landfall abilities. And there's two of those. The other way this deck um, sort of manipulates land, if you like, is by simply making sure that you have um, sufficient land in your hand. And it does this through two cards. One is Armillary Sphere, um, two, two to cast and um, the, the ability costs two. You also have to tap it and sacrifice it. It allows you to search out two lands but they only end up in your hand. Um, and then obviously you shuffle your deck once you've done that. And then Journey is Kite. Uh, this is two to cast but three to activate the ability. You tap this, you don't sacrifice it, um, but you search your library for, for one land and then put it into your hand. So this one is reusable, whereas the other one, you know, you have to sacrifice it so that ends up in the graveyard once you use that ability. Obviously we've got our cough. So here's our planeswalker. Uh, three abilities on this planeswalker. 3 loyalty for a 2 and 2 red. Uh, the plus 1 uh, allows you to untap a target mountain and it becomes a 4-4 red elemental creature until end of turn. It's still a land. A minus 2 uh, will add red to your mana pool for each mountain you control. So that's going to give you a nice boost to your, your mana pool. And then the minus 5, the ultimate, um, this is where the emblem comes in. So it create, you get an emblem with mountains you control have tap this land deals one damage to target creature or player. And obviously here's the emblem that goes with that ultimate. So there we have it. Now we've got a number of spells that are going to um, either do direct damage um, to creatures or players. Um, Searing Blaze is our lowest cost one, it's two red. Um, in its sort of plain format it simply gives us one damage to target player and one damage to target creature. So not very spectacular. Um, however if we've had land come into play it does have a landfall ability on it so that suddenly boosts that up so that we now have three damage to a player and three damage to a target creature. Then we've got a number of spells here, and these are all these early ones are all instants, which um, are based on the number of mountains you have under your control. So downhill charge will basically pump a creature's 
um, power by x where x is the number of mountains that you control. You can also sacrifice this instead of, uh, or sacrifice a mountain instead of paying its two and a red casting cost. So another reason to have plenty of mountains at your disposal. Uh, Seismic Strike is another card which uh, is sort of based on a number of mountains, obviously in addition to just the fact it costs mountains to cast. It's two and a red, but also the amount of damage is based on uh, the number of mountains you control. So the amount of damage to a target creature equals the number of mountains. An extension of that is Spire Barrage, much more costly for and a red, but this deals damage to a target creature or player equal to the number of mountains you control. And that's Sorcery Speed. So with the instance, you can obviously play an instant um, on your opponent's turn during combat, you know, any time basically. Uh, whereas the sorcery, um, you can't play it during combat and you can't play it on an opponent's turn. Jaws of Stone, this is five and a red, and another one that deals um, damage scaled against the number of mountains. Again, divided. As, as you choose between uh, target creatures and or players. And that just is the only dependence here is that um, it's the number of mountains you control when you cast it. Not that that makes an awful lot of difference unless you suddenly lose a land as you're casting it. Volley of Boulders is eight and a red, um, deal six damage, so fairly high cost for six damage, but it has flashback on it. So you can flash it back, you know, cast it from your graveyard, and that'll do another six damage, and then it gets exiled. So then we move on to our creatures. I've organized, organized these by uh, mana cost. So we're going to look at the, the two casting cost stuff first of all. Plated Geopede is always very interesting. This is a, a 1 and a red for a 1-1. One, one. has first strike but it also has this interesting landfall on it. Um, and the landfall is worded so that whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control Plated Geopede gets plus 2 plus 2. So this means if you've had more than one land going to play, this ability is scaled accordingly. And that's obviously going to happen if you've been playing, um, utilising your Wayfarer's Bauble correctly. So, you know, you could end up pumping this if you've got a, you know, had managed to get two lands out um, in your turn. It's going to go plus four plus four on this. If you manage to get three, you know, you've waited to use two Wayfarer's Bauble which you've got in play and they've not been bounced or counted in any way. Um, it's going to go plus six plus six on the one one. So that's going to give you a seven seven. And there's two of those. Uh, Pygmy Pyrosaur. Um, <clears throat> this has a, a pumpable um, power on it. Um, plus one for every red mana you expend. Costs one and a red to cast. It's a one one. Um, it can't block. And then Volshock Morningstar is a piece of equipment. Um, two to cast, but it's also two to equip. And that's a plus two plus two. So of course, strictly speaking, this isn't going to be usable until earliest it just depends I suppose on on how how much um, you've managed to use your wayfares bauble to get land out um, but you know you place on turn two and if you if you've simply been making your land drops one per turn then obviously this isn't going to be able to be equipped to anything until um, turn three. So now moving on to our three 
casting cost cards. Okay, Fiery Hellhound, another card where we've uh, got a, an ability here where we can just expend as much red mana as we want and just you know, get the benefit of this plus one plus one for each red mana spent that way. One and two red for two two. And there's two of those. Volshock Sorcerer. Uh, we can tap this and deal one damage to target creature or player. It has haste and it's a one one for one and two red. Ether Membrane is a wall, obviously it's defender. One and two red for zero five but it does allow us to block creatures with flying. When it blocks a creature, you also get to bounce that creature at the end of combat phase. Pilgrim's Eye, uh, we mentioned earlier, it's um, an artifact creature, 1-1 one, one for 3, so quite a high casting cost. It does have flying, but also it'll help you hunt down um, your land. It has an Enter the Battlefield trigger on it, and there's two of those. Volshock Battle Gear. So this is a three casting cost um, and it's equipped for three and it's plus three plus three. So obviously, um, although you may be able to cast this on, on turn three, you may not be able to play this until next turn with this. So that's the three drops there. And you can see just looking at the abilities where having you know this access to um, amounts of red mana is obviously going to come in handy and so that's what you're looking to do with this deck is to make sure you make all your land drops and also use the Wayfarer's Bauble to ensure that you might you know get two uh, or two shall I say more than one land out per turn um, then we move on to some interesting cards on our our four drops we've got Anger and this card, uh, your opponent definitely doesn't want this ending up in the graveyard. Because if this gets into the graveyard and you control a mountain, which you would be doing, um, creatures you control have haste. So that's all, all your creatures that you control across the board have haste. Um, two, two for three and a, a red. And it has haste itself. So that will basically, and with haste, as you probably know, that just means to say that the moment it comes into play, you can attack with it. There's no summoning sickness on the creature with haste. Because these ravages another creature with landfall, uh, when this enters the battlefield, uh, you may have it deal one damage to a target player. Uh, Volshock Berserker has haste on it. Three and a red for a three two. Stone Giant. 2 and 2 red, so these are all 4 drops, 3, 4. Um, this is interesting, you tap this, uh, you get hold of a target creature you control with toughness less than this card. Um, oh sorry, yeah sorry, Stone Giant's power. Yeah, toughness less than Stone Giant's power. Um, it gains flying until end of turn and then you destroy the creature at the beginning of the next end step. So it's almost implying that you've taken hold of the creature and sort of thrown it. Um, the, that's what the flavour of that implies. Um, Bloodfire Kavu, uh, you can sacrifice this and um, get it to deal two damage to each creature. And that's a 2-2 two, two for 2 and 2 red. So lots of cards there with very interesting abilities on them. Um, but a couple of those revolve around you doing some sort of sacrificing. So have got a good mixture there of haste, landfall and a sacrificing on that particular drop. And we move on to slightly higher costing cards here. So these are all our five drops, three and two red. Uh, we've got Lithophage. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice Lithophage unless you sacrifice a mountain. So this is where having excess mountain obviously comes ha in handy. This is a 7-7 seven, seven for, for 5, 3 colourless and 2 red. So a pretty powerful creature to get out on turn 5. But of course, um, to keep this in on the battlefield, you're going to have to be sacrificing lands. Torchling has lots of abilities on it. 3-3 uh, three, three for 3 and 2 red. You can um, pay one red mana, untap this, 
uh, pay one rare red uh, to give a target creature um, oh sorry to make a target creature block this card uh, you can pay one red to change the target of a target spell that targets only Torchling and in addition you can play one colourless mana um, to give it plus one minus one until end of turn or one colourless to give it minus one plus one until end of turn and then Geyser Glider, another one with landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control Geyser Glider gains flying until end of turn so more stuff to sort of exploit those landfalls that you're trying to get on this deck and then finally we've got the top end of the mana curve here so these ones here are all going to be six and this one is a whopping great big eight mana so we've got chartooth cougar uh, another one where you can expend rad mana give it plus one plus zero until end of turn also has mountain cycling so you can discard the car and use it to search out for mountain cards put it in chat put that in your hand it's just a 4-4. Four, four. Um, Earth Servant, 5 and a red. And uh, this is another one which is pumped based on the amount of mountains you control. So this is plus 0, plus 1 for each mountain. So this will pump up its um, toughness. Greater Stone Spirit, 4-4 four, four for 4 and 2 red. Um, it can't be blocked by creatures with flying. Two and a red until end of turn target creature gets plus zero plus two and gains red. This creature gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. And then finally we've got Bloodfire Colossus. So this is a six six for six and two red. Um, again another ability here where you, you can pay red mana, sacrifice it, and Bloodfire Colossus deals 6 damage to each creature and each player. So remember that's each creature and each player. So you, you know, you'd obviously want to use this where maybe your opponent's down to 6 life but obviously you're not. Or you've got some way of you know, averting um, that damage. Which I don't think this deck actually has in it. Um, so there's the, the deck in total um, so as you can see what we've got here is a lot of cards that rely on the fact that you're going to be making regular land drops you're going to be using Wayfarer's Bauble to, to get more than one land out per turn um, you're going to be using the uh, that in conjunction with say Landfall there's a lot of cards here that have got Landfall on them um, and also by having lots of mountains in play that's going to pump up a lot of cards or, or enhance a lot of cards which have these abilities which say you know this damage or this amount of pumping is based on the amount of mountains that you have under your control so the deck is all about making sure you have a good supply of mountains that either can aid with abilities can be sacrificed in some cases or can aid with landfall um, what's interesting about the deck, I think, is that it's almost in order to get it to play fairly with um, the Venser deck, um, it's not going to go totally crazy from turn one. So none of there's no sort of one drops here that are going to just come out and start bashing your opponent straight out or, or do anything crazy straight away. And I think if there was, then basically it would make this deck, these dual decks, so lopsided. Um, so that, that's where they've gone with this, I think, is just to make the, the game develop a bit more than it would if you were just playing a, you know, like a turn one aggro sort of deck. So although this is a, obviously an aggro deck, um, there is a, a degree of sort of holding back to it um, and, and sort of allow a bit of development before you go in for the kill. Now, in terms of how this sort of interacts with the Vencers deck, um, what's interesting about this deck is there aren't that many enters the battlefield abilities. So if you are bouncing cards, these cards using the Vencer deck, you know, going up against it with the Vencer deck, um, you're not going to be troubled by 
any um, abilities being re-triggered when when the, any dextrin has come back into play. So obviously that's one thing. This is the way this has been put together. So you know a lot of these uh, removal cards, or you know things like Oblivion Ring, you know basically stick the card into the um, the egg into exile. Um, which also helps in the case of anger, because the last thing you want to be doing is sticking anger into the, or, you know, helping the person playing cough to get their anger actually into the graveyard. So that's probably another reason why, you know, the way that these two decks try and play nice together. Um, there's also things like safe passage, which are going to be really useful in the Venser deck, should, you know, the person playing cough of you know, done a ridiculous amount of pumping on one particular creature or, or you know, as, as playing some direct damage that they've got here, which they've also pumped with a number of mountains. And the other thing that might happen is, you know, if, if the person playing cough is sort of totally tapped out, um, expending it all on various burn, then things like that's where overall comes into play because you know they can't counter this without paying X, and if they've tapped, they're tapped out. Um, then that's going to be really useful. Um, we've got Miss Meadow Witch, which is another thing, and one one of many cards that sort of bounce things into exile. Um, and a lot of these cards can be stifled, so to speak, by bouncing them into to the exile zone and then bouncing back. For instance, if Cothas turned a mountain into one of those four four elementals then of course you could you could use one of these cards with the, the bounce on it into the exile to sort of bounce it out when it comes back again it's going to come back as a normal land um, the vanish into memory is interesting because what you're looking for when you when you play this is any of these red cards where they've been there's like a lopsided pump on them in terms of the um the power, because if you remember with this card, what you wanted to happen when you played it is the particular creature to have how higher power and toughness, so you end up drawing cards more than you have to discard them. Um, so any of the cards here where the person playing cough has used some of these abilities, you know, expend red mana to, pl to pump it by plus one plus zero, and you play this. Once they've done that, it's an instant, so you can play it, you know, it's got sufficient speed to do that. Um, that's going to come in really handy, because there's only one of these in the deck. And then finally, um, just a general note with this, of course you always have this card for when um, your opponent's just, just swung um, on the previous turn, and they're sort of tapped out, and you put this into play, and it will destroy all their tapped creatures. So that's just a general note on that. So there you have it, really. That's just a breakdown of the of the cough deck um, and how it hangs together, and also some of the cards in the um, Venter deck that it might interact with. Okay, thanks for watching.